Welcome back to Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus. John Burton with you. Happy to have you along with us on this Wednesday evening here in the Music City. Uh, your phone calls are welcome, 615-737-7767. Uh, in the meantime, of course, as we said earlier, Titans at the Colts on Sunday. Big game in the AFC South. The Colts won one and one, a win, a tie, and a loss in their first three games. The Titans, of course, one and two, got their first victory last week uh, over the Raiders over at Nissan Stadium. A much needed win to avoid starting the season 0 and 3. Ryan Tannehill, the starting quarterback, had a pretty good game against the Raiders. He'll look to have another solid game against the Colts on Sunday. Here is number 17, Ryan Tannehill of the Titans. Sacks was a big issue coming into this year, even with a lot of new personnel and, and Taylor really missing the last two games. Impressive that, that only four sacks after after three games here? Yeah, I think our guys have been doing a good job of, of giving me some time. You know, I think that... Um, we put a lot of focus and attention on it, you know, throughout the the off season, um, but it's really a a full unit thing, right? It's it's the blocking up front, it's myself getting the ball out and receivers winning in in a quick time so that the ball can come out. So, uh, really proud of our guys and um, you know seeing some of the spring and training camp work pay off. Are you? In a situation, a lot of times where you're trying to get the ball, you're getting the ball out quicker. You, you know, has it been noticeable for you? And also, are you like doing more of living to play another day when nothing's there, just throwing the ball away? Uh, I think that it all comes into play. You know, I think that just knowing, knowing what concepts you got. You know, are you going to have an opportunity down the field? Um, if you do, great. You know, take take a shot at it. If not, then you know find a completion somewhere. And if if nothing's going to be available, then you know get rid of the ball, throw it away in a safe place. Ryan, got the strong start to the game on Sunday. What's the challenge now in carrying it through halftime and, and being more productive and staying on the field longer in the second half? Yeah, no doubt. we got to come out and execute better in the second half. Um, like you said, we did some good things in the first half and, and really didn't do nearly as many good things in the second half. And it wasn't uh, a drop-off in, in focus or urgency, I didn't feel like. Um, we just missed some opportunities on, on making some plays. So just have to clean those little things up and uh, be able to come out and carry that momentum through halftime into the second half. You mentioned the blocking, the O-line. When it comes to the Colts defense, one of the best rush defenses in the league for the first three weeks, what stands out to you on the tape and just how much of a challenge do they pose, not only for Derek, but the offense and what you're trying to do as a whole? Yeah, no doubt. They're a really solid defense. You know, you start up front, uh, they have a, a big penetrating front. They play fast. Their edge rushers are, are good. Um, their backers play really fast, you know, whether Shaq plays or not. You know, the guys they have in there across the board, play with a lot of speed. They're long, they're, you know, they, they use their length well and they play with a lot of speed. So it makes it tough for the O-line to get up on that second level. Uh, then secondary wise, they, they don't play a ton of defenses. You know, they're pretty simple in what they do, but they're really good at what they do. You know, that's their philosophy is they're gonna be good at a, at a few things. And, um, you know, they, they mix it up by where they drop their safeties in and all that type of stuff. But uh, at the end of the day, their, their focus is playing really good at, at what they do and, you got to tip your hat to them. They're doing a good job of it. Ryan, how good was it to get Robert Woods going? It, you kind of had something going there in that last game. Um, just how important is to keep that? And also, um, just <clears throat> anything with Austin Hooper, if you're right, just continuing to, to make that somebody you're going to target. Yeah, no doubt. You know, I think um, Robert's done a good job the past two weeks, really, of, of kind of building on on what he did in, in Buffalo and coming out and having another good game here at home last week. So definitely just want to, you know, keep it going in that direction with, with him. And then, you know, Hooper's going to get his opportunities, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll see, you know, when they end up coming up. But uh, obviously, you know, a talented guy and have a lot of chemistry with him. So I'm just looking forward to those spots opening up in games and being able to get him the ball. With Woods, is it does it shorten the learning curve significantly when it's veteran to veteran when a new guy comes in? It definitely shortens it. Um, you know, some things just don't, it's a quick conversation as opposed to having to introduce something. You know, he's already seen it before, heard it before. We're just getting on the same page. Some things I don't even have to tell him. You know, he just already knows and, and does it. So, yeah, having that veteran presence in that room, that veteran leadership there, and then just as far as getting on the same page with me, um, he's done a great job so far, and uh, it's, it's showing. How do you like the guys to come back to you and, and tell you they're open on a play when you may not have, have gone to them? Like, how has that 
type of conversation going uh, for you guys so far this season? Oh, that's good. I mean, it's going to happen, right? You're not going to see every open guy every time. You know, you're kind of going through your reads. Um, you know, safeties may dictate it, coverage may dictate it, or it could just be a play dictated. So you're not going to see the full field every single play. And, you know, occasionally, you know, a guy's going to win on the backside or something. So um, just having that dialogue of, okay, how they're playing me on the backside, you know, what, what this corner's uh, doing to me, okay, in this, in this coverage, I'm getting this outside leverage. I think we have something here on the inside. You know, whatever the case may be, you know, that dialogue, dialogue has been good, and uh, it's going to be critical as we move forward throughout the season to take advantage of some of those situations that arise, you know, throughout a game and we can make mid-game adjustments. Ryan, after the start to the season, how nice would it be to be able to get back to 500 uh, going, you know, at the start of October? Oh, it's huge. You know, we want to go 1-0 this week. You know, that's the goal each and every week, but uh, crucial at this point in the season to, to go get a win. we got an, uh, a division opponent on the road and a tough place to play. So, you know, have our hands full, but it's, it's going to be important for us to go out and play well. Is, is part of the reason you think, Ryan, there's been so, so much variety in the, in the receivings and receiving yards this year, don't necessarily have that dominant number one receiver? Are you more likely to, to look broadly, I, I guess, at your options than maybe you were? You know? Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh I try to try to find a, a good spot to go with the ball each and every time I get to throw it. You know, whether that's a matchup dependent or play dependent, it all kind of varies depending on what we have going on. But our guys have, have shown across the board that uh, each of them had different strengths and, and can get open for me. So have a lot of confidence, you know, no matter what the play call is, that we'll find a good spot to go with the ball. With getting Derek involved in the past game on Sunday and with what Hilliard's been able to do, how good is it to know that the check down is not necessarily a give up play? Yeah, yeah. Anytime you check the ball down to, to Derek or Dontrell, you know, it's, it's not even close to a, to a give up play. Both those guys are explosive with the ball in their hands. You know, Derek had some good gains underneath uh, as well as Dontrell and, and what he's done, you know, a little bit earlier in the season. So, um, yeah, you know, we're going to try to push the ball downfield and, and take our shots and give opportunities to our receivers, but um, not going to force it into, into a window we shouldn't and, and drop it down when we need to. Is the learning curve kind of coming along for, for Chig, in your opinion? And, you know, when do you think he might be may possibly more involved in the, in the offense? Yeah, if Chig, I think, has done a good job with what we've asked him to do. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully, we can get him more involved as as the season goes on. Um, but right now, he's he's jumping into to everything we're asking him to do. He's obviously shown, you know, he can make some plays for us on special teams and, and on offense. So, um yeah, if he can continue to progress, then we want to get him involved and, and help create another weapon on our offense. You had a chance to say anything to Taylor, I guess, since he got put on uh, injured reserve? Yeah, I've been communicating with Taylor, man. It's just tough to to see him go down again, you know, for the second time in, in well, I guess, three years. Um, just really a, a tough situation with how everything went with him and, and why he's out and all that. I'll let him get into that. But uh, really just frustrating situation for him primarily and, and um, just missing missing having him around, missing having him, you know, anchoring down that left side for us. What's it like when he's going to be a little bit quieter now? The rest of the season? <laughs> no doubt it'll be a little bit quieter. Uh, you know, sideline conversations from the O-line department will be a lot less, but uh, definitely going to miss Taylor. What's it like when a new guy comes in, whether it's Dennis Daly or maybe LaRave and Clark now and, and, and building trust with those guys? Yeah, you have to, uh, you have to Trust him from the jump, you know. He, uh, Dennis kind of got thrown in there um, after being here just a, a short period of time, uh, but he came in. He did a good job for us, and I think, you know, he's getting kind of settled in a little bit over there on the left side. We'll continue to uh, to build that trust even more, and you know, I'm confident in, in what he's done so far, and that he can continue to, you know, do that and be better. How uh, much of you watching? I know Fort Lauderdale's maybe on the other side of where the hurricane's coming in, but how much of you kind of watch the hurricane coverage uh, for? Yeah, watching it, um, you know, over the weekend, you know, just kind of seeing where, where that thing was going to end up going, um, obviously kind of turned into a, a big storm there. So, you know, thoughts and prayers go with, with everyone there on the west coast of Florida. Um, really hope that, that everyone can remain safe and it's not too bad. Um, as far as the East Coast goes and, and Fort Lauderdale, you know, it ends up just being, I think, a little bit less than tropical winds and, and a lot of rain. So, um, yeah, thankful, thankful everyone down there is safe, but pray for the people on the West Coast. Thank you. And we, along with Ryan Tannehill, certainly send our best wishes down to everybody in Florida in the path of uh, the hurricane. Obviously, uh, seeing some of the footage has been pretty devastating to watch, and we certainly hope everybody can uh, stay safe down there uh, as well. 
And uh, obviously a big game coming up for Ryan Tannehill, but also a big weekend for Titans All-Pro safety Kevin Byer, the former Middle Tennessee State star. On Friday, we'll have his number retired when the Blue Raiders take on UTSA uh, in Murfreesboro. And then, of course, the game on Sunday. So a huge weekend for Kevin Byard. We uh, caught up with him in the locker room this morning before practice to get his thoughts on his big night Friday. And, of course, the big game coming up on Sunday. Out of the way Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Number retired. How excited are you for it? Super excited, man. I'm super excited for it. Obviously, the Blue Raiders obviously just got coming off a big win in Miami, uh, facing a really good team in UTSA. Uh, excited for you know a packed house, um, and obviously to celebrate my jersey getting retired is gonna be an awesome moment for myself and also my family as well. With how much that university has just like held on to what you did there and the pride that they show towards what you're doing here as an NFL player, I mean, how good does that make you feel? Feels great, man. I mean, I. I just wanted to go out there when I obviously went to MTSU, man. I just wanted to be the best player I can be, make an imprint on the community, but obviously the team as well. And uh, it's turned out great. You know, I'm getting my jersey retired. You know, I want to say it sunk in, but it's still like it doesn't really feel like I don't know to be the second player in school history to get a jersey retired. I'm only I'm still in the league. It's not like I'm an old guy, nothing like that. So it, it's, it's pretty surreal. So like I said, just appreciative and uh, humbled and honored. How about Sunday? I mean, how much do you guys look forward to these divisional matchups, especially with the Colts? Because it's always there's always crazy stuff going on. It's always highly physical and very competitive when you play. Expecting a dog fight. Uh, going against the Colts, obviously a team that we have plenty of history with. Two teams that's built the same. Uh, teams that play hard. Um, so it, it should be fun. We've had some success against those guys uh, late, so we know what type of mentality they're going to have coming to this game. So it should be a fun matchup, you know, going against those guys. And uh, like I said, it should be fun. Anytime we play, go up to Indy, games are usually close. So just excited. What do you remember about last year's game up there? It was a weird game, right? Derek got hurt. Yeah. You gave up the, the, the pass late and mm -hmm. you had to pick in overtime to set up the game winning field mm -hmm. goal. I remember you said afterwards, you said, I was already preparing what I was going to say. I really was. I was. I was going to apologize for all that. <laughs> what do you remember? about that game? I mean, I remember starting out the game, we was uh, down 14 points, and we was able to come back. Like, it was a fun game. Uh, memorable game for me. I obviously caught the pick at the end, but like you said, the pass interference was like I was beating myself up on the sideline, thinking like, man, what I'm going to say to the media. Like, But like I said, it was a really fun game, and uh, obviously we got the sweep against those guys. So um, like I said, I mean, I'm expecting a really good match up against those guys and those guys have a lot of guys on the offense with you know obviously starting with 28 and then obviously Naeem Himes who's playing a lot more with those guys so it should be fun. What about Ryan an OG quarterback I mean he's, he's seen it all I mean it's, he's a tough guy to fool what's that chess game going to be like you think on Sunday? Yeah I mean we're going to try to do everything we can to affect him uh, especially on the back end just mixing disguise and coverages we kind of uh, even going back to his days in the Falcons I watched some of his film in the Falcons and obviously uh, what he's doing now similar stuff uh, he likes those and breaking routes and things like that. So uh, should be excited, like I said. But he's he's played a lot of ball. He's a really, really good quarterback. Uh, he's going to make all the throws. So uh, excited to try to go up there and affect him. And I know as far as the defensive line, we get some pressure in his face. Uh, we should have a pretty good day. Jeff talked about just how much of a complete back Jonathan Taylor is. Would you mind talking a little bit about what makes 28 so special? Yeah, I mean, his contact balance. Uh, he's a guy, if you, if you give him a seam, he's going to find him. He's going to be going through that thing full speed. So for us, it's going to be kind of the similar plan that we have against Saquon where we don't want to have too many one-on-one -on -one tackles because he runs through arm tackles. I think he's second in the league or something like that in broken tackles. I think he's third in the league in yards and you know he's going to get 20 plus carries so we definitely have to go up there and that has to be the first key of stopping him and stopping that running game. How much of an emphasis has there been on for this team as a whole matching what you do in the second half versus what you do in the first half? Getting off to those good starts and you know maintaining it through halftime. Yeah I think that's the biggest thing you know even leaving the last game uh, just kind of reviewing ourselves and being critical on ourselves. We have to be a better second half football team uh, as a whole. Um, but as far as the defense, you know, I think those X plays, man, I mean, we talk about stats and I know our stats, you know, are bottom of the league and all that stuff, but a uh, big stat our defensive coordinator brought up today in the meetings that we had 14 drives where we gave up X plays and they scored nine touchdowns and I think it was like three or four field goals or whatever. But we had, I think, maybe 20 drives or some, some to that extent where we didn't give up any X plays and they only had one field goal. So I think the formula is simple. If we don't give them the X plays, we could be a really good defense. But if we do give up X plays, then, you know, we're not going to be worth anything. Kevin Byer, Titans All-Pro Safety, uh, talking in the locker room before practice today. Of course, as we said, a big, big weekend for him. He gets his jersey retired at Middle Tennessee.
Tennessee State on Friday night when the Blue Raiders take on UT San Antonio. And then, of course, the big game on Sunday against the Colts. And it was Kevin Byard who uh, got the interception in overtime to set up the game-winning field goal for the Titans as they escaped with a win last Halloween in Indianapolis. All right. We'll take another break. We come back. We'll hear from a couple more Titans players. Then we'll switch gears and talk a little college football. The Vols, number eight team in the nation. How about that? Getting ready for their bye week. Stay with us here on Sportsline.